Shalom Yisrael, the Shaikwa Ban Yisrael. Before I begin, I want to give thanks to the Heavenly Father, Earthly Mother, for this opportunity to be a light while I'm in this reality. I also want to give thanks to the Angel of Power, who is the evening angel for Tuesday, and the Angel of Joy, which was the day angel for Tuesday, and tomorrow morning it will be the Angel of the Sun. So I want to acknowledge the angels on my videos from now on. Messiah, he says to do that in Gospel of the Essenes, the Book of Peace, Book 4. And so I certainly want to take advantage of that while I have the time to share it with you. And I hope you read the Gospel of Peace, Book 4, and learn how and what to say to the angels of the day and the angels of the evening. Now, I've been looking at the Third Testament, the Book of the True Life is what it is called, and there is not a single doubt in my mind that this is Messiah reappearing to our world in world and word form no doubt in my mind whatsoever when you read this book it's like he is right there sitting right in your room where you are wherever you are and he's talking to you and he also describes his word that way when you read this now I wanted to talk about this part of the book called the communion of conscience between God and man. Now, the thing that's going to strike you about this book, and I'm surprised this thing hasn't really blown up in the whole wide world. And it's such a powerful blessing because he speaks so plainly and he explains so clearly things like the first era, E-R-A, the era of the Father, the second era, E-R-A, the era of the Son, and now the third era, E-R-A that we are in right now, the era of the Holy Spirit. This is the time where the word that he is giving to us now is settling in our spirit, in our soul. We are committing his teachings to our spirit. Ever since the 1800s, when this word began to come out, and you can read about what I'm talking about so far as the creation of, the, of this book, if you uh, download it, you can go to the prologue of this book or the introduction, and it explains what Messiah did to uh, bring us into the third era, the era of the forerunner. And then Messiah sending the Spirit in his word and explaining it plainly like he said he was going to do in John 16. And that's what we have right now. It is plain teaching in everyday language that you can easily understand. And the common theme you're going to find in this book, the common theme you're going to hear him talking about He's going to talk a lot about love. He's going to talk about the law. He doesn't mean this mushy, feely type of love that we have in our nation. He's not, he's not talking about that carnal, American-style type of love of the law. He is talking about the law, statue, and commandments in a spiritual sense. And that the elect are going to realize that. One of the things that our nation seems 
not to have overstood very well. One of the things that I think that's been really, really misunderstood is the love of the Father. I mean, we have really, from what I can see, have really dropped the ball on that because we have ascribed salvation to ourselves because we are the chosen. And yes, I do believe still the Hebrew Israelites are the chosen and we were meant to carry the light into the world. But we ascribed salvation only to ourselves, and that got in the way of the true meaning of the will of the Father. I think that we got high-minded and now we have this new revelation, the Third Testament. We have this, this is a new revelation. That is a new revelation right there. And I wanted to see when it came out and I could only go back as far as a couple of years that this, this book, and I know it's been longer than that because it's from the 1800s. The forerunners came in the 1800s and then Messiah he picked up and began to use the word to reach to the elect and to speak to them spirit to spirit through his word and the day is coming Colossians 1 27 those of you elect and the bride he's going to speak through you that is the next step on the agenda Messiah is going to speak through you Christ in you the hope of glory that's what we're waiting for see there are only certain brethren that can receive this word right here in this book the elect are going to feel him they're going to see him in his words in this book this book is going to cause a separation in our nation because many brethren I perceive are not going to receive it. The language he uses, we're not used to it. He does not seem to hold the same position that we hold against our oppressors. He tells us to pray for our oppressors. He talks about why we should pray for our enemies because the nature, he explains what is the nature of judgment that I've been talking a lot about in these videos the last couple of days because it's mind blowing to me. He talks about the conscience is going to testify against each and every individual. And that for those brethren that do not redeem the time, do not store up, you may have to reincarnate. Now, I'm just scrolling this so that you can look at it, you can read it. Maybe I can comment on it a little bit. And I would just point out the plainness of these words. And it is so disappointing to me that I just cannot overstand at all why there are billions and millions of people talking about this, talking about it on the internet, social media, everywhere you go. Because this is, Messiah will tell you this, what you're looking at right here is no different than him in the flesh. This word right here, especially because that time has come for this revelation to come out. Now, he says, today I come to you with a teaching that might seem impossible for the world to practice, but once it is, once it is, let me get to it. Well, I lost it. Go back here. He says, once it is understood, it is the easiest to fulfill. I come to teach you the worship of the love. See, there it is of God through your life, your deeds, and the spiritual prayer, which is not pronounced by the lips at a predetermined place, nor is it in need of forms or images to be inspired. Now, you're going to find out that Messiah is against all forms of rites and rituals and, and uh, formality. 
you're going to see when you read this book that he is in favor more of spontaneous prayer. He's more in favor of sincerity and truth. And that's where a lot of brethren are going to miss the boat because we are attracted to formality and exactly doing it this way and making sure you count all your fringes and that sort of thing. I'm telling you, this word right here, Messiah is doing the same thing that he did in the second error, E-R-A. We made the Bible an idol so that we could not receive any other books. I remember that when I came out with the Nag Hammadi, I had brethren coming against me that I was going off. This is another book. It's not the Bible. And brethren could not turn to the left or to the right. They, Everything had to be Bible, Bible, Bible. And I saw how the Heavenly Father pulled the rug right out from underneath a lot of our brethren, our own nation. Messiah is not allowed to give any new revelations. He was not allowed to give us to deviate from what we already knew. And we had him in a box. And we didn't follow the lamb everywhere he goes. So back to this word, Messiah, he is speaking in a language we're not, a lot of us are not used to. While men have wanted to see me as a distant and remote God, I have proposed to show them that I'm closer to them than their eyelashes. They pray mechanically, see, and they do not see all that at all. And if they do not see all that they ask for immediately, discouraged, they exclaim, God has not heard us. You, you see that? He never really talked like this in the scriptures. He says, if they knew how to pray, if they united their minds and hearts and their spirits, they would hear the divine presence of the Lord in their conscience and feel, feel his presence very close to them. But how can they expect to feel my presence if they ask through materialized worship? How can they possibly sensitize their spirits if they worship even their Lord through images made with their own hands see and a small testimony i've always been that way in my walk where i try to sow to the truth and spirit and the truth i didn't always fall down on my face to pray i would pray 